Okay, so forming differential equations. I'm sorry when I printed it, I think the rabbit on your page is huge. I just forgot to make it small, so you're, you're gonna run out of space when you, you possibly will run out of space when we do this example, okay? But it's actually, it's a pretty short example that we've got here. Now the difference in these kinds of questions, okay, it was obviously a differential equation question, but it's just words, okay? There is no differential equation that is actually there. So you need to create the differential equation. Does this, this idea of creating your own kind of differential equation, does this remind us of anything that we've done in the past? Yeah. Rates of change, yeah, connected rates of change where we talked about the rate of something. If something talks about rate, what did we say that that looked like in the derivatives? D something over dt. D something over dt, because rate means how it has changed with respect to time, okay? So we're going to read this question that we've got. It says, the rate of increase of a rabbit population with population P, where time is T, is proportional to the current population. And this is how lots of population modelling is actually done in the real world. Okay, So anybody who goes and do like biology or anything at university would look at differential equations. Guys who did the UCL project, this is where population modelling comes from. Form a differential equation and find its general solution. So we're just going to translate some of these things here. The rate of increase, and we're talking about a rabbit population, which is P. So what would be the thing I would write down for that? D dp dt. Now, because it says increase, it's going to be a, a positive, right? I'm not going to write down a positive. But let's say it said the rate of decrease. Well, decrease, we know, is to do with things getting more negative. So a decrease would have been a negative. But in this particular case we've got here, we're talking about an increase, so you won't actually see the fact that there's a positive sign there. And it says that it is proportional to the current population. It doesn't say that the rate is equal to the current population. It says it's proportional to. Good. So you put a K in front of it to show that it is proportional. Now, you may have looked at in GCSE when you talk about those proportional relationships. You might have seen something like y is proportional to p, and then you change it and say y equals kp. You add in the, do you remember what that was called? Good, it was called the constant of proportionality. So you might have things where it might say the population of rabbits is inversely proportional to the population, which would be kind of, I don't know, I can't think of a situation where that would be true. Um, so that would be that dp dt is equal to k over p. You might have things where it says that the population of rabbits is inversely proportional to the square of the population. And so it would be dp dt is equal to k over p squared. So all of those kind of setups that you have for those questions, um, you just have to read them really carefully to work out what it is that they're actually talking about. So we've come up with the fact that this is a, an increase in the population. If there was a minus in front of it and they asked you to interpret it, you would say the population, the, the increase in population is actually, sorry, the population change is a decrease. The population is decreasing. Here the population is increasing because it's, we're presuming that k is going to be a positive number greater than zero. If k was equal to zero, what would we actually be saying about the population? We'd just be saying the population of rabbits is the same. It's not changing. OK, so we are now going to try and solve this equation. The thing you're not going to like about this is it says p and t instead of y and x. Because people, I don't know why, every single year people freak out when it doesn't say y and x. It just says P and T, so just, just take it easy, right? We're going to put the P values to the left, and we're going to put the T values to the right, OK? So I'm going to divide by P, so I get 1 over P, and I have the DP, DT. I'm taking it slower than usual, and on this side, I just have K. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to put the DT up here, so I have 1 over P, DP, equals K, DT. K is a constant, and you're integrating it with respect to T. So it's just going to become KT plus C. 1 over PDP, 
ln p. So what is p equal to? E to the power of kt plus, whoa, well, not kt plus c, sorry, kt plus c. Do you remember what? We can make that big A, can't we? Do you remember we said about this? E to the kt plus c is e to the kt multiplied by e to the power of c. And instead of saying e to the power of c, we let a equal e to the c. So we get a e to the kt. So the population of rabbits is equal to a e to the kt. No numbers. We've got the only number in this whole page is the number one. Okay, this is what maths basically becomes. No numbers, just letters. So let's just quickly think, what does that mean that the population of rabbits looks like? I mean, I know you know what this graph looks like, but let's, so we're going to say P, well, I'm going to do it with Y. Y equals A E to the K kx, and depending on how you vary the value of a, you can, well, we can vary, and when we vary the value of k, this tells us about the population of rabbits. So what does it look like is happening to the population of rabbits over time? Increasing. increasing. Can we describe it? It's increasing exponentially, right? What does the value of a seem to be doing? It's not actually, ch I don't believe the value of A is changing, I guess it is changing the rate as well actually, but what does it seem to be doing about, it's changing the y-intercept, what does it seem to be representing, let's say that A is equal to 10, let's try and interpret that. Whoa, 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 too many people at once, what do you say Hamza, or Ronak? Ronak? It's not the current population, it's the initial population, look, when we have got here, this axis, the x-axis is the time axis. When the time is zero, okay. the population is 10. That's fine. And you'll be able to see why that would be true. Because yeah. if, if we come back to this, if I said, okay, when the time is zero, the population of rabbits is, there's 300 rabbits in our colony of rabbits. If you substituted those in to go from a general solution, to a particular solution, you'd see you'd get this. You'd get 300 equals a e to the 0. So 300 is equal to a. So in other words, this a value that you have here is going to represent the initial, the initial population. Now, the value of k looks like it's going to, well, let's see if we can try and describe what this is going to represent. Let's zoom out a bit further. What, does it, what do you think if I make k bigger? What does it seem to be doing? As k gets bigger, what does it seem to be doing to the, how the rabbits are behaving? The population is increasing at a higher rate, okay? We all know why rabbits will be, yeah, they'll, <laughs> their population will get, <laughs> rabbits are renowned for populations getting very, 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 very quickly. So. Rabbits are known to be populated. What do you think it would do? Rabbits breed very fast. They have a lot of fun. <laughs> yeah, let's let's try and move on. I think actually. Um, so there's that's that's a, a, a model. Shh, shh, shh. That's a model for a population. If I told you that when t is equal to 0, p is equal to 300, that allows you to find out what a is. But I can't find out what k is unless, what do you think they might need to have told me? How could I also find out what k is? I need another boundary condition. They've given me a boundary condition here. They've said that when the time is 0, the population is 300. They might have said, three months later, the population of rabbits is 900. So they, will, they might tell you these two, you need two things here. The reason you need two things is because you've got two constants. You've got a constant of A and you've got a constant of K. 
you have to have two pairs of things to find the two constants. And it's, usually it could be a simultaneous equation that we've got. Now, this is dead simple. Just you wait. OK, so here we go. We're now going to have a look at a, a, a big question. And this is one that I really need your concentration. Across our whole morning of work that we do, if there's ever a time to be concentrating fully, this is the time to have this concentrating fully. OK? So it says, water in a manufacturing plant is held in a large cylindrical tank of diameter 20 metres. Water flows out of the bottom of the tank through a tap at a rate proportional to the cube root of the volume. Show that t minutes after the tap is opened, dh dt is equal to minus k cube root of h for some constant k. Now, this beginning part of the question is nothing to do with solving a differential equation. We're trying to get to the point where we're, we're beginning to set something up that exists there. But I think this question is hard because of all the different words that we have. And I really want to try and break down everything that we've got written here. So first of all, um, da, 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 we've got something to do with a cylinder. And we've got this, ta this thing that's probably going to be quite helpful for us in a second. But it says, water flows out of the bottom of the tank through a tap at a rate proportional to the cube root of the volume. So that thing I've written in blue there, I want to try and write down what that would be. First of all, it's d something over d something. What is the d something? Good. It's dv over dt. Kind of annoying, because they want dh dt. So we're saying the volume of water in the tank is changing at a rate. And what does it say? At a, a rate proportional to the cube root of the volume. Now, that is proportional to the cube root of the volume, which you can go straight into saying k cube root of v. Oh, very good. It's going to be a minus. Because it's decreasing. So it will be minus. Do I want to use k? Because they've got k there. I'm going to use a different constant. I'm going to use c, OK? I'm going to use a different constant rather than k, because they've used k in the question, and it might get a bit confusing if we keep repeating the same letters and things that we've got there. Um, but we want to find out what dh dt is. This is why we have to drag ourselves back all the way to the differentiation topic. And someone mentioned it earlier. I think Anika was the quickest to say this is to do with connected rates of change. So we need to try and find out what dh dt is. That's what we're trying to find out in the question. Do you remember how we do dh dt? Uh, dh by d something, and then. So what do we think these are going to be? These are going to be dv, right? Great, we know dv dt is this, because it's a decrease, so we've got the negative. It's flowing out. How am I going to find dh dv? Do you remember what we have to do? Pardon? We're going to do the inverse, but we haven't got dvdh yet. How do we find dvdh? Make h with v. Make h. OK, we need to find a formula that connects h with v. How am I going to find that? The volume. So what do I need to find? I need to find the volume of the water. So the volume of the water inside this tank is pi times the radius squared times by the height. It's the cross-sectional area, which is a circle multiplied by the height. So it becomes 100 pi h. That's the volume. We've now got v connected with h. So I can find, I can find dvdh. dvdh is differentiate this with respect to h. 100 pi. It's just a con it's, that's just a constant in front of the h. So dh dt is dh dv, which is 1 over 100 pi, multiplied by dv dt, which is minus c cubed root v. Oh, sorry, yeah, c, c cubed root v, not c cubed. 
Ruby, <laughs> thank you for saying that. So now we can say that dh dt is equal to minus c over 100 pi cube root of v, which is what they wanted us to show. So dh dt is this, and what we can actually see here is that k is equal to c over 100 pi. Yes? Yeah, because it's asking for a. Oh, because the cube root of v is v to the power of two. We need to rearrange this bit. I'm very, very sorry. Yeah. Let me get rid of all this. So we don't want there to be a v in here. We want it to be h. So we need to look at this thing that we've got. And we need to make h the subject, which is v over 100 pi is equal to h. Sorry, 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 sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. We can just replace, I'm sorry, we can replace, we can just sub it in. I don't know why I was doing that. So we've got 1 over 100 pi multiplied by minus c times the cube root of v, which is 100 pi h. Sorry about that, guys. And we, can take out the we can take out the cube root of 100 pi. And so we keep 100 pi, 100 pi. So we get minus c cube root of 100 pi, cube root of h, all over 100 pi. That's much better. So since they asked for k as a function, are we allowed to just leave c there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And in this particular situation that we've got, we can see that k is equal to c cube root 100 pi over 100 pi. Yeah, I said we'd finish when we hadn't actually made it look like the thing they wanted it to look like. Part of it, okay. This is just part A, yeah. yeah. This is no, in, this is, we technically could have done this when we did differentiation. If you run out of space on this bit, which you definitely, definitely will do, I think there's some space possibly on the back. I think that's the next, but there's a, a space on the last couple of pages if you do run out of space, because I didn't anticipate actually how, how long this question actually gets. Yeah. Now we're going to use their simplified version, where dh dt is just minus k cubed root of h, OK? Because this is a replacement that we've done to come up with the thing that they've actually said. Now we're going to get to the fun part, which is show that the general solution of this differential equation may be written h equals blah, 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 where p and q are constants. So there's more constants that are coming up. So this is the part for part b, where we actually want to solve the differential equation. So I'm just going to put h on that side, you may have preferred to think about this dh dt as minus k h to the third. I don't really like cube roots because you can see how I kept calling it the wrong way, right? If you found all of this bit confusing and you were able to do differential equations, just concentrate on what we were doing here, okay? I need you to stick with me for this bit. Even if you found this bit confusing, it is looking confusing, but you can all do this part here, right? So when we start um, separating these variables, if I put the h onto the other side, I get h to the minus a third dh over dt equals minus k. And then I'm going to put the dt and I'm going to integrate. So I get h to the minus a third dh equals minus k dt. What does the left hand side integrate to? 3 over 2, h to the 2 thirds equals right hand side minus kt. Now, we already used c earlier. Um, we'll just do an a.
don't know why I've used A, but we've done it now. So all we need to do is make H the subject, because if you look at what they said, I know this is confusing, but they just want it to be H equals something. And remember, we're not ever going to get a P or Q coming up in our question, because we don't have P and Q. We're hopefully going to have a constant minus another constant times T to the power of 3 over 2. So we now have multiplying everything by 2 and dividing by 3. So multiplying this by 2 and dividing it by 3, multiplying this by 2 and dividing it by 3. Save a little bit of my space here. What power would I have to raise all of this to to make h have a power of 1? 3 over 2. Because remember, if you want to get rid of 2 thirds, you raise the power to 3 over 2, because 2 over 3 times 3 over 2 is just 1, 1 over 1. So it will be, I'm going to rewrite the order of this, 2a over 3 minus 2k over 3t to the 3 over 2. Which is p minus qt to the 3 over 2, where p is equal to 2a over 3, and q is equal to minus 2k over 3. And remember, this k is actually c cubed root 100 pi over 100 pi. But it doesn't matter, because we keep, in, we keep doing new constants to make them look nicer. P and Q look so much nicer than minus 2 over 3 C cube root 100 pi over 100 pi. That's why we rename it. That's why we give it a new name, because it's just a number still. So why not make it look nice and make it look like this thing that we've got here? Now we're going to do, I don't know why I'm finding this really funny, but I am. Now we get to this point. It says, initially, the height of the water is 27 meters. 10 minutes later, the height is 8 meters. Good, so I'm going to write that down. When t is 0, h is 27. Look out for units. This is all in meters, but the, the example is so evil. They will give you a question that halfway through is meters, and then suddenly they'll be talking about centimeters. So just look out for it, OK? Then my other piece of information that I've got is when t equals 10, h equals 8. Uh, I believe it's all in, I think oh, it's all in minutes. minutes. Oh, feels, yeah, minutes. Everything is in minutes, yeah. You never, know, you, you never know, you better check. So let's go back down here. Part C wants us to find the values of P and Q. Really, to find the values of P and Q, we're going from a general solution to a particular solution. This is the general solution. We're now going to try and do the particular solution. So, like I said, you may need more space. And we know that when t equals 0, h equals 27. That's the easiest one to deal with, first of all. So I can say 27, which is h, equals p minus 0 to the power of 3 over 2. So 27 to the power of what is equal to p? 2 over 3. Now, you can do that without a calculator. What's th yep, because the, th the third will cube root it, which is 3. The squaring will give you 9. So p is 9. This is trippy looking because they look like a reflection. But then we still can't use that information for the next part. Yes, you can use that information for the next part. The next part says when t is 10, h is 8. So 8 equals 9 minus q times 10 to the power of 3 over 2. So you're now going to do 8 to the power of 2 over 3 equals 9 minus 10 q. 8 to the power of 2 over 3? 4. Because the cube root of 8 is 2, and you square that and you get 4. So you get 9 minus 10 Q. So 10 Q is equal to 5, just 5, thinking about how that all moves. So Q is equal to a half. OK, 
can you see what can you see now why we we kept renaming the constants because we didn't want to deal with the cube root of 100 pi over 100 pi we could just keep renaming the constants you're not going to have to there's not many questions where you'll do this this is a the hardest one i could find that i thought would prep you as much as possible so this now tells me if p and q is this the height in the tank is 9 minus a half t to the power of 3 over 2. And I'm going to pause before we actually finish the question to graph that, OK? OK, so this is the graph. Instead of it being y, it's h. Sorry, instead of it being h, it's y. And instead of it being t, it's x. So this is the height of the water in the tank. This is the amount of time that it's, that it's uh, flowing. So you can see at the beginning, it has 20, a height of 27 meters. We said 10 minutes later, it had a height of eight meters, which is that bit that we've got there. And it kind of looks right, doesn't it? It looks like if you had water in a tank, you'd expect it to flow out really quickly at the beginning. You know when you have a bath and it like flows out really quick at the beginning and then it flows out slower towards the end because there's less pressure of water pushing it down? So that's what it looks like. We're now actually going to do part D of the question. It does, yeah. Find the time in minutes when the water is at a depth of one meter. So we're now saying, what is t equal to when h is equal to one? And we can predict that by looking at my graph. When the height is one is somewhere over here, right? Looks like I'm probably going to get an answer of about 16-ish, OK? So let's make that, make that come to life. Let's have a go. So we have now said that the height is 1, and we want to find out what t is. So 1 equals 9 minus a half t to the 3 over 2. So you get 1 to the 2 over 3, 9 minus a half t. So that's 1. So you get half t to 8 minus 8. My brain has just gone really stupid. So you get a half t is equal to 9 minus 1, which is 8. So t is equal to 16 minutes. It just happened to be a whole number. You're rarely ever going to get these ones when they come up as a whole number. But it was what we predicted from that graph that we had there. Just going back to Desmos, 1 meter looks like it's exactly at 16. And we can tell when the whole thing completely drains out. The whole thing drains out at 18 minutes. From my graph, I can tell that. If you wanted to find out when the whole thing drained out, what would you set in your <coughs> variables? H is 0 when, when it's completely drained out that we've got there. So we're going to do some practice, but I'm just going to talk us through everything that we did here. This beginning bit, they might ask you to set up some kind of equation. It may require connected rates of change. Please listen to this bit, because I don't want you all to just copy what this example is. Every question is different. It may have some stuff to do with connected rates of change. It may just be like, write, write it down from the information we've given you, right? The reason we knew this one was connected rates of change is because they wanted dh dt, but they were telling me about dv dt. Then, even if you can't do part A, you will, they will always tell you what the differential equation is, solve that differential equation, and actually do that bit of the question. Even if you can't do the first part, this is a question that's probably going to be 12, 13, 14 marks. Can't do the first three marks? Make sure you get the last 11 marks that there are there. So we then solve the differential equation in part B, which actually wasn't very hard. If you, if you zoom out a second, solving this is actually not hard. That's really, really easy. The, the hard bit was part A. Once we solved this, they changed the constants to P and Q just to make it look nicer. And again, part C isn't very hard. Part C 
is just what you were doing in your homework, substituting in values. Apart from this time, we had to do two pairs of values because we had two pairs of unknowns. We had P and we had Q. And then the last part is just using the question and interpreting the things that you've got there. So when we have a look at some of these questions now, we may not like them, but we have to keep, keep going. Which is the one? There's a, an exam question and a couple of, another couple of exam questions we'll have a look at later on. Okay, I'll leave it up here because I know some of you are writing it down. 